Uh, I want to move on to uh, gold and silver and Bitcoin. And you, again, uh, I want to go back to your last report, said uh, chaos coming. Well, what do we have? Chaos. I mean, they're, they, you know, the Democrats are trying to get uh, Jeff Sessions to step down. Uh, you know, Obama's got his, uh, 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 his uh, organization, uh, you know, his organization, uh, OFA, is that what it is? <laughs> uh, oh, uh, uh, a- AOF, I don't know, whatever, whatever right. it is. You know, his, uh, let's, not, his, let's not assign uh, words to the, those letters. Well, I mean, but his, uh, or he's got his change group. I can't remember what the, yeah. what the acronym is. But anyway, he's got all these group of people that are going to be protesting against Trump and trying to suppress First Amendment rights, I guess, is what I, the way I look at it. But is this, this is the part of the chaos you're talking about, and it is going to be reflective in gold and silver and Bitcoin. You said Bitcoin would go yeah. up, and sure enough, it sure did. Yeah, we passed a major temporal milestone here, which was Bitcoin crossing over the value of gold in U.S. dollar terms. And uh, that uh, was a temporal marker for movement in silver. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, they've stopped on silver in terms of the price, but I think that's actually kind of uh, uh, a very uh, enlightening because it now shows us where the mark in the sand is. And so I think we can be very supportive of uh, Bill Murphy of GATA, uh, who's saying that, well, at this point, I think he said it was like $18.20 or some, some number he had. But within the $18 range, I've got a lot of emotional support here saying that the powers that be are very much afraid of it breaking over that level. And they actually fear its uh, breakout as being uncontrolled once it does go over that level. So we're right there. We have the emotional chaos on their side. We have the building emotional chaos at a political level insofar as the uh, dying political elite are concerned. Now, here's where uh, my data would disagree with their assessment. Um, They are of the opinion, because they're so isolated, that they sit in their um, vast urban centers surrounded by millions of people just itching to rise up against the tyrannical Trump regime. And that further, that there's this... uh, um, unspoken mass of supporters out in the great flyover states to, to aid them in this effort. And that's their, at least their uh, narrative that they've got running at the moment. Some of those in, involved may understand that they're actually at best going to fight a losing guerrilla battle, but there is no emotional support for this. The uh, intergenerational emotional support wow. for the thing is waning. So the emotional levels like we saw in December uh, that provided the uh, impetus for the support are down about a third uh, Whoa, in this most recent drop. exactly in this most recent processing. And so, if the trend continues, by the time we reach the um, the hiatus or the the uh, early part of June, where the chaos kind of abates for a little bit economically, during that period of time between now and then, we might lose another third of um, of the uh, emotional. Uh, push for this. So that's where we're actually seeing this turning going on. And that accounts for our new rise in the support numbers for the administration as a whole. It's awful hard to argue with success, even if you're just hearing the rumors of the success in the form of the pedophiles being arrested, etc. And I'm glad, actually, I'm glad. Let let me intrude and say I'm very, very pleased that we have this um, uh, soft voice uh, approach to the arrests and so on and uh, that it's proceeding as it is because this is uh, the uh, way in which serious people conduct business. And you think that top people are going to go down with this? I mean, top big names. One, one third of our uh, uh, broadcast media personalities, according to our data sets, I'm 30 percent to, you know, somewhere uh, up to maybe 40 percent uh, of those famous faces is how the data sets describe them, will either be arrested or will flee the country. So We're that's how kidding. that's how. No, that's that's what the either uh, due to their own actions or to supporting the actions of others that are going to get them into trouble. And so we've got a lot of data in there that says, you know, um, that uh, these people are actually going to flee the country and seek uh, asylum elsewhere. And this is all because and this is why they're fighting. I'm going I'm, to I'm sorry, I'm circling back. But this is why they're fighting so hard. The media is fighting so hard because some of the top people in the media know they're up to their necks with sex trafficking and pedophilia. Either they are doing it or they are, know about it and are helping other people cover it up. Is that what you're saying? Correct. They have, they have a skin in the game and that skin is hurting already and they're afraid of getting it sliced off. Wow, that's uh, that's big. And then tell me about the the price of silver. You're saying that the price of silver is going to actually at some point. And I know you're a big fan of Bitcoin because it's hard, much harder to manipulate. 
but you're saying that the price of silver is going to go way higher, faster, maybe not more price-wise, but it's going to go up faster than, uh, than gold and even Bitcoin. Explain Correct. That. Correct. Silver has got a, a very interesting future ahead of us because for a number of years, it's going to be increasingly a key component of increasing uh, complex hyper technologies. And so the, the actual the growth rate, the projection of emotional attachment to silver escalates as we go forward, even out into 2022, which is about as far as I trust my numbers on this. But basically what's going to happen is the silver will break out this year. The manipulation will shift and end for a bit. They'll try and and ratchet it back in, and then they'll fight this slippery uh, uh, upward, from our viewpoint, on price battle as they try and suppress the price, but every day they'll lose a little bit of their ability to suppress, and it'll just keep going on like that through this this year. Then as we get up to the end of the year, somewhere, let's say October, or, yeah, October-ish, uh, we'll get another breakout, and they may not be able to contain it at that point because of what's going to be coming out uh, relative to technology then. And so the, the desperate need for silver will become um, uh, dramatically evident to uh, people all around the planet. And we actually have language of a great silver dishoarding over 2018 and 2019 in many Western countries where the governments and via um, uh, you know, corporations who are seeking to make a profit send people out to assay and purchase silver in the form of old silver plate, silver any way that it can be stripped off of anything, even getting to the point of buying um, uh, old um, uh, film stock uh, chemicals, these kind of things, just to recover the silver. It'll become that uh, precious as we go forward because of the many conflicting uses for it. The technologies, the hyper technologies, which will be energy related, and then the spin offs that will be related to um, uh, health, and then the, the monetization. Now, in the longer longer term. And, and wait, 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 I just want to interrupt you one minute. Sure. In the longer term, your data, hold on, held that thought. So the price would have to be astronomical if they're trying to scrounge, if, you know, silver off of film. The price would have to be astronomical. Is that, am I wrong? It's got to be, it's got to be at least as high as $600 an ounce uh, because of the relationship of that particular temporal marker and that price that goes all the way back in our data to 2003. And so I think it'll be much higher than that. And it will escalate very rapidly towards uh, parity with gold. And then it will basically get too expensive to use as money. It'll become a, a hyper rare, uh, pretty much industrial chemical only over like these next uh, few years. So that'll extend, as I say, at least out into the 2022 to 2024 range. And then we may get <coughs> some kind of a change. But as of this point, it shows um, that silver mining becomes a very lucrative um, profession here 2019 onward uh, with the first mines just starting to show a little bit of stuff in the early 2020s due to new technology not due to um, uh, standard operating procedures and if gold and if silver is six hundred dollars an ounce at least what does that put gold three two three four thousand five that was that put gold <clears throat> the the next number we have for gold is about forty eight hundred Okay, so we show a slight pullback somewhere in the neighborhood of $4,800 U.S. per ounce of gold. I would say that we're looking maybe before March of next year, um, just just making a guesstimate about it because of the, it'll and it'll be uh, one-third uh, the value of Bitcoin at that point. So at the point that it does its pullback, it's a little complex, but uh, in just in terms of how it shows up. But so say uh, $4,500 would be about one-third of the value of Bitcoin at the time that gold is at that level. And this is when um, silver has already uh, escalated that the amount of language devoted to it uh, is more than double now. So that would imply... And also the language is spread beyond simply the business and the um, precious metals community. So it's more, much more what we might think of as um, a general population discussion. And that would imply that more than 1% uh, of the populace is attempting to buy it. So I would suspect, again, that we're looking at well over $1,000 an ounce for silver at that point. And 4500 for gold, is that what you're saying? 4800 and then it drops down about $300, and then the data shows that when it's dropped down to that point, just curiously, it happens to match for a brief period of time exactly one-third uh, of the price of Bitcoin when gold does that little dip and then it's back up again. So, I mean, you're telling Bitcoin's going to be uh, $1,300, $1,400 an ounce 
thousand uh, or $13,008 or something. I think that is the target that the data shows as of uh, February of next year. Oh, boy, oh, boy. You're talking about exploding uh, gold, silver, and Bitcoin prices. Exploding. No, 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 sorry. Bitcoin is simply escalating. It doesn't explode until 2019. Oh, but gold and silver explodes and tries to catch up with Bitcoin, but it won't. Bitcoin just is, is, is on an arc where it's just going to continually go up. Let me give you some shocking numbers here. If you just looked at it against Bitcoin, against existing stockpile of gold right now, and you recognize that they both had attributes that made them similar, there's one uh, Bitcoin available on the planet for every thousand ounces of gold. Oh, boy. Huh. That's uh, so. Yeah. Wow. 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 And you can't. And, and can't you just manufacture more Bitcoin? No. There's the finite limit of, of the 21 million that'll be uh, created, and that's it. And thereafter, we have to really. Thereafter, in the Bitcoin community, is when things get really interesting for us because then we start um, mining through, so to speak, processing through all the decibits and millibits, and spreading out the wealth around the planet. That's at least the Chinese approach. Is that. Uh, when the bitcoins are all mined, then it becomes very interesting because then you can actually do things with the money, so to speak, and the wealth that it um, uh, represents in a way that we can't quite now because the focus is on creating that next bitcoin as opposed to shoving more value further down, so to speak, into decibits and millibits. And where do you think ultimately, you know, in the 2020, 2025 range, where do you think gold and silver end up? In, in the years 2020, 2025, whatever, in that... Frame. Well, uh, we don't have numeric values, okay? We rarely get those. We have uh, emotional uh, quantifiers that are applied. And so for silver, we have language that says that the people that are the silver stackers are going to have multiple generations in their families praise their names for being so smart because these guys will be creating fortunes that will travel down several generations in a family. So that gives you some idea. Huh, wow, unbelievable. Uh, and I wanted to get into uh, that.